One of the choices you have with the Directorist plugin for WordPress is whether you want to use Open Maps or Google Maps. It defaults to Open Maps, and you can use that right out of the box. If you want to use Google Maps, you need to set up an API key, and that's what we're going to take a look at today. Hi, my name is William Beam with Superbia Press. We try to help online entrepreneurs understand and use the technology that powers their business. Today, we're going to be talking about Directorist, and I want to talk specifically about Google Maps. But before I get into that, I want to show you something else. The nice folks at Directorist gave me a coupon code. It is the same as my last name, Beam, B-E-E-M, and it's for 20% off. So if you come over to Directorist.com slash pricing, you can see this option that you have over here. So there are yearly access and lifetime access deals. And depending on what works best for you, you can go ahead and click on buy now. And then when it's time to check out, you'll see where it says have a discount code. Click that, enter in my last name, if I can spell it correctly. Click apply. And you can see over here that it's taken off 20% and it's reduced the total. So that's just uh, an example for one particular plan. It'll be 20% off for any of the plans. So if you decide that you want to buy Directorist, this is an affiliate link. That means that I will get a little bit of a commission. You will save 20% and hopefully that's a good deal for everyone. So let's go over into my demo site. We're going to look into the settings of Directorist listings and I'm going to come down here to map and you can see where it says open street map. That's the default. If you want to use Google map, you can switch that and it's going to prompt you for a Google API key. So where do you get that? That's what we're going to talk about today. Let's come back over to this tab. We're going to change from the director site. We're going to go to console.cloud.google.com. And I will put a link to that below. So when you come over here, you're going to look at all these things and you say, what in the world have I gotten myself into? We're going to come down to APIs and services and click on library. And now you're going to see that there is a whole lot of APIs available from Google Cloud. Don't worry about it. We want this first one where it says Maps. And let's click where it says View All. There are 17 different APIs. The ones that you want to have are probably going to be a little bit varied. The first thing I want to do is look at this one, Maps JavaScript API. It says Maps for your website. So I'm just going to right-click this and open it in a new tab. And then we're going to enable it. Once it's enabled, you're going to see a page like this. What I want to do is come back over here to the library with APIs and services. And the reason I did that in a new tab is because we're going to open up a few more of these things and just kind of make sure they're available. So if you want to have directions within your maps, you'll enable this one. You'll want geocoding that'll convert between addresses and geographic co coordinates. You may want uh, geolocation. You may want elevation. You may want to be able to embed. And I think we're probably also going to want the places API. So this is all up to you, but I'm going to go ahead and enable these. I won't make you sit through it. I'll just do that and then we'll come back. All right, we've gone through and you can see that I have a number of APIs enabled. Some of these do have a cost with them. So you have to determine what you need and what you want. But at the very least, you're going to want to be able to provide uh, the directions for your website. Now you need to get the API. To do that, we're going to come over here to APIs and services, and we're going to come down to credentials. So you need to create credentials right up here at the top. And you can see that we don't have any keys to display yet. So we're going to go ahead and create that. We're going to create an API key. And then there is the API key. I'm going to copy that. And then down here, you can see where it says restrict key. The idea of restricting the key is to ensure that it can't be used on another site. So you can determine where is this going to be used. And there's a number of options over here. And you, let's first give it a name. Let's so SP for Suburbia Press. And that way I can just know Suburbia Press Google Maps API. I'm going to restrict this by HTTP referrers, in other words, websites. And we're going to click down here, add an item. And the refer, 
you can see there's an example, a star.example.com. Well, we're going to do something very similar to that. So there's a wild card with a star at the beginning and the end. And I want to say done. So since I have this restriction over here for the application by the domain, I'm going to leave the API restrictions off and we'll just go ahead and click on save. And now that I have my API key, I can come over here and click this thing that'll copy the API key. We'll come back over here to WordPress and then where it says Google Map API, I'll paste that in. And now you have a few options. You can say restrictions, default latitude, and this is where maybe depending upon the location that you're in, you may want to say, here's your starting place. So default latitude and default longitude. If we go ahead and click here, it'll open up a new one. And then we can find out where do I want to be? Well, let's say that I want this to be in the Orlando area. And we'll start at the Orlando International Airport. So there we go. I can just co copy this from the latitude. Then I'll come back. I will copy this. Make sure I get all of it. From the longitude. And I'm going to leave the defaults as they are. And then you've got a few options down here, display map, info window, preview image, title, and so forth. I'm going to save all of those. And I'm going to go ahead and click save changes over here. Cause I never trust it when I see save changes at the bottom of the top. I know it's the same thing, but I'm just one of those people by habit. You know, it's kind of like wearing uh, suspenders and a belt. You want to make sure your pants don't fall off. <laughs> all right. A couple of other things to notice while we're here in the Google cloud platform under APIs. First off, you can see your project. It'll say my first project. You can select the name that you're going to call this. So for example, it may not be my first project that you want to call it. And it's going to come up with an ID over here. You can kind of change that as well too. So we can come back and deal with that a little bit later. Also notice after we've created our um, API key, there's this little warning over here. Remember to configure OAuth consent screen. So let's go over here, click this button. And how do you want to use this? Is this going to be only available to users within your organization? You don't need to submit your app for verification. If it's going to be external, which is going to be the type for people who are having external visitors come in. Basically you need to submit this with some test users to test things out before you go live. In this case, I'm going to select internal because I'm not providing this for external use for the purpose of my demo. You very well need to select external. So, since I'm just showing this and the only people are using it right now are me or is me, whatever the grammar is, I'll go ahead and select internal and select create. And then you get to go ahead and display this stuff. So let's come up here. So you notice it's going to ask you for some information and what is the application homepage? What is the link to your privacy policy and your terms of service and conditions? Make sure you have these. And I've got a referral I'll leave in the uh, description below as far as where you can find these. You can get a free privacy policy from Bobby Klink. He's a Harvard educated attorney who has a lot of online legal policies. He's also got a web pack that includes like your privacy policy, your terms and conditions, and your disclaimer for a reasonable price. Then of course you can add your information over here as far as where is this gonna be used. So once you have that consent done, you can take a look at your summary, save and continue. So I've taken one of the demo directories, this one, Holly Cottage, and loaded it up just to see if Google Maps showed up, and it did. But there's a bit of an error over here. It says, Google, or this page can't load Google Maps correctly. Do you own this website? And I'll say, okay. And you can see it says, for development purposes only. There may be some problems. And what you need to do then is take a look at the Java console, and that's inside of Chrome. And if you get a different error message, it's just a gray background says, look at the Java console. When you come into Chrome, go to view developer, JavaScript console. And that's what we're looking at over here on this side. You can see where it says console. The part in red is what tells you the error that you're seeing. So you must enable billing. And that's because Google, as I mentioned before, Google maps costs money. 
So if you want to, you can go over here to the cloud project. It'll give you the URL. You can click that. And in this case, it'll show you over here, enable billing. Mine was called my first project. So you can create a billing account. And I'm not going to go ahead and go through this because I don't really want to share all of my billing information. But I did want to point that out. You need to have a billing account enabled to use uh, some of these APIs. So I'm just going to go ahead and click United States. And this is a startup idea, a business idea. I haven't really implemented this. I'm going to say continue. Put in my phone number. And it's going to send a code to me. I'll verify that. Then I'll ask for payment method. And then you can get a free trial. But the payment method just really wants you to put some information in here. And it could be, you know, credit card, PayPal, or directly from a bank account. And I'm not going to do that because this is not something I'm going to continue to run. But if you want to use Google Maps on Directorist, that's just an idea of what you need to go through. It's not incredibly difficult to do, but Google Maps is a paid API. for, And until you register something, you're going to be able to see... Uh, for development purposes only, you might get that error message that we just saw. But you can, if, you've, if you're running into problems and you're not seeing the maps the way that you want them to, remember, work in Chrome because Google Maps is a Google product and so it's going to work best in Google Chrome. Go down to Developer, JavaScript Console. So if you see an error message that says, look in the JavaScript Console, this is what they're talking about. And then look for something in red and that will tell you what the error is and give you links to say, here's where I can fix it. So I hope that was helpful for you. You may want to be using the free OpenStreetMaps. If you want to use Google Maps, it is a paid service, but there is a free demo. You can try it out. And this is something that we're looking at for business sites. So paying for a service is not really out of the question. And I don't think there's anything wrong with OpenStreetMaps. Some people want to see that Google map in there because they think it's a bit more credibility and a bit more authority for their site. It's really up to you to decide what works best for you. But if you like this or if this helped you out in some way, please go ahead, give the video a like. That tells the YouTube overlords we did something right. Please subscribe. We'll do more videos on Directorist and other things for small businesses and click the bell notification icon. You'll get notified the next time a video comes out. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video.